monoclonal antibodies. Here we have a group of antibodies. And here's another one. So the differences between these two groups is that the group on the left all have one unique shape and will therefore all bind to the same antigen. The group on the right have different shapes, so we have different types of antibodies and therefore they will bind to different antigens. So a group of antibodies that all have the same shape and will bind to the same antigen are known as monoclonal antibodies. For reference, the other group are called polyclonal. So what uses do monoclonal antibodies have? Number one, we can use them for cancer treatment. Number two, they're found in pregnancy test kits. And number three, we can use them to detect the presence of antigens or antibodies in someone's blood. This is by doing the ELISA test. Let's start with cancer treatment. Now we know that cancerous cells are slightly different to our normal cells. Not only do they have a different shape, but they also grow much more quickly. So over here we have a patient. There's a tumour in this part of their body. Traditionally, a drug would be injected into their body. The drug would go all around killing healthy and cancerous cells. This is not ideal. It's the equivalent of carpet bombing all of your body, killing both healthy and cancer cells. And as a result, this would lead to side effects such as vomiting, losing hair and losing weight. So, using monoclonal antibodies to treat cancer can be done in two ways, either directly or indirectly. So, let's start with directly. Now remember, the antigens on the surface of cancer cells are different to the antigens on the surface of healthy cells. Because of this feature, we can create antibodies that are only complementary to the antigens of the cancer cell. These antibodies will specifically target the cancer cells. This means that if you have a chemical or a hormone that usually signals the cancer cell to grow, it will be blocked and the message will not get to the cancer cells. So this will inhibit the cancer cell from growing. Now let's look at what happens indirectly. Number one, we're going to take an antibody that's complementary to the cancer cell. Then we're going to load it up with a cytotoxic drug. This drug will only target the cancer cell, unlike before where it killed all our cells. Once the drugs bind to the cancer cell, then it will deliver the lethal dose that will destroy the cancer cell, leaving the healthy cells relatively unharmed. The next use of monoclonal antibodies is in pregnancy test kits. So in a pregnancy test strip, there are two sides. One side, we have monoclonal antibodies that are attached to blue beads. On the other side, we have the same monoclonal antibodies However, these ones are stuck down permanently. If a lady is pregnant, her urine will contain a hormone, HCG. This hormone is complementary to the antibodies that are stuck on the test strip. So, the lady will urinate here. The hormones will bind to the antibodies, forming a hormone-antibody complex. Then, Together, they will travel down the strip. On the other side, the other antibodies will also bind to the hormone. So now we have a chain of molecules that are attached to each other. The blue beads will stay there and this area will go blue, indicating that the lady is indeed pregnant. However, if the lady is not pregnant, when she urinates, there will be no hormones present. This time, the antibodies and the blue beads will travel alone. 
Since there's no hormone, the other antibodies that are stuck will no longer be interested in binding to them. And as a result, the blue beads will fall off and the area will not go blue. Okay, using monoclonal antibodies to detect the presence of an antigen or another antibody using the ELISA test. Here we have Bruce. We want to know if Bruce has the HIV antigen floating in his blood. To do that, we're first going to take a blood sample from Bruce. In this blood sample, there's going to be antigens. However, we're not sure if these antigens are HIV or not. So to find out, we're going to do the ELISA test. First, we're going to take these antigens and stick them to the bottom of a well or a test plate. Then we're going to wash it out with pure water. Rinse and remove. The reason we do this is to make sure that the antigens are properly stuck down and any unbound antigens will fall out. This is so later on our results are accurate. Okay, next we're going to take an antibody that will only bind to the HIV antigen. This antibody also has an enzyme attached to it. So we're going to take this antibody and add it to our well. The antibody attaches to the antigen. Then we're going to add a substrate to which the enzyme will react with. And the substrate changes color. So the substrate changed color. That means the enzyme was present, which means the antibody was present, which means the HIV antigen was present as well. However, we could also have a scenario where we throw in the antibody, but it doesn't bind to the antigen. Yet, we still throw in the substrate, it mixes and changes color. So the color has changed, telling us the enzyme was present, which tells us the HIV antibody was present. So does that mean that we have a HIV antigen in the well? So the problem here is that although we have a positive result, it could be a false positive. What do we do to ensure this doesn't happen? So we're going to take a step back. In both scenarios, we're going to add the antibody. And this time, before adding the substrate, we're first going to do a washout. This washout will make sure any unbound antibodies are removed. Now, we throw in the substrate. And this time, only one well will change color. The well on the left has changed color, indicating that the antigen stuck to the bottom of the well is indeed a HIV antigen, which is why the antibody was stuck, and that's why we had the enzyme present, and then the color changed. On the right, the antigen was not an HIV antigen, which is why the HIV antibody did not bind and was removed after the washout. So this was the ELISA test. Now there are many different versions of this test, and in an exam, you might not get the same exact method. However, it's important to understand the point of washing out and the use of monoclonal antibodies in this scenario. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.